All right, we're back out here on this fine sunny day uh, and we're going to be trying making, as the video title suggests, some nitric acid without using sulfuric acid. So this isn't my idea. This comes from uh, a fellow YouTuber called Mist32, uh, MistYT32. Yeah, we'll go with that. He was posting videos many, many years ago, back when I was just starting out. Um, he's since given up about six years ago. I followed his video when he first started out and so I'll run through the, what the, the science is behind it and then I'll explain why I actually you know did it in the first place and why, why I continue to do it. So the usual way of making nitric acid is you take sulfuric acid and a nitrate salt, usually potassium nitrate or sodium nitrate, ammonium nitrate gets a little iffy when you use it, uh, and it makes nitric acid which you boil off and you get potassium bisulfate left over, so, or potassium hydrogen sulfate. What we're going to do instead is we're going to take sodium hydrogen sulfate or sodium bisulfate as I prefer to call it and the nitrate salt and that's going to boil off some nitric acid and leave us with um, an equivalent each of um, sodium sulfate and potassium sulfate. I know it didn't balance this well but it highlights the equation better when I write it like this so just ignore that. So it looks all very easy when we write it like this but really the big difference is that this first equation sulfuric acid is a liquid whereas sodium bisulfate is a solid so this second reaction only occurs when sodium bisulfate is molten. So we have to melt the sodium bisulfate with the nitrate salt in order to distill off the nitric. So we need to heat this reaction up to a much higher temperature than we need to heat up this reaction, which has its own side effects. If you're thinking that this is a safer method now, because maybe, maybe you're just starting out and you think sulfuric acid by itself is too dangerous, this is not a safer method. It's 100% not safer. So why would I ever want to do this reaction? Why wouldn't I just do it with sulfuric acid originally? Well, a couple years ago, I was actually in a peculiar situation where it was virtually impossible for me to find sulfuric acid, but I could get nitrates like quite easily. Uh, this is basically a relic at this point, but um, this is the original, there's still a little bit of ammonium nitrate in the bottom. Um, these ammonium nitrate cold packs, I used to just go to the local pharmacy and pick up these for a couple of dollars and they were filled with ammonium nitrate pills. I, you know, reacted this with potassium chloride um, and that you would crystallize, crystallize out potassium nitrate really easily. But for life of me, I couldn't get um, sulfuric acid and I wanted to make nitric acid. These days, we actually have the opposite issue, as you might expect. It's quite easy to get um, sulfuric acid and really quite hard to find nitrates over the counter. Um, you know, a lot has changed in the last six, seven years. The one catch to it though, is that the sulfuric acid is really, really expensive. I made a video, I think on this channel, about buying acids. And um, a lot of you were shocked to find that this, these liters of sulfuric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid, were going for about $50 at the hardware store. These days, about a year and a half later, they're all going for about $60. So the price of them has all gone up by about 10 bucks. This here is potassium bisulfate, I buy it from Bunnings, and it's of really good purity. I mean, it says a thousand grams per kilogram, but I've never had any issues. You know, the powder, it's a nice white powder. Um, and when I say it's cheap, I really mean it's cheap. I mean, this three kilos cost me, I think, $13. And it's even cheaper if you get it in the soft packs. I just think my hardware store was out of the soft packs or something when I got it. And I mean, three kilos is gonna last you, I mean, my three kilos, this is the second container I bought. The previous container lasted me five years, five, six years. All right, so as for amounts, we have 50 grams of this and 85 grams of this. I can't remember exactly how much Mist uses in his video, but that's how much I have written down and used over the years. Um, I think he uses a bit more of this because I think the initial sort of scale down measurements was 50 grams of this and 90 grams of this, but I find that um, there's a big issue, and we'll get to it eventually, about, is about foaming. And if we use less bisulfate, we take it down to about 82 grams instead of 90. We get a lot less foaming, but the yields decrease. So I generally, depending on how much time I actually want to spend in, like, you know, babying this reaction along, I will vary this amount. So um, lowering it decreases the yield, but I don't have to spend so much time doing the reaction. So we're going to split the difference really and do about 85 today. Oh, this is a new packet. They put a little plastic bag around it now. Wow, look at the development in seven years. Oh, that's adorable. And um, it may be tempting to just fill it halfway with solid, but let me tell you, this is definitely as much as this flask can can uh, hold on to. So.
All right, it's nearly distilling over, but we can see there's quite an immediate problem in the fact that it generates a lot of nitrogen dioxide fumes. Now, when you distill using sulfuric acid, uh, you do produce some nitrogen dioxide fumes, but generally it's, it's not heaps. With this re reaction, this distillation, there's heaps because you have to distill over the nitric acid at the melting point of the bisulfate. Therefore, you get some decomposition of the nitric acid, which comes over as, as nitrogen dioxide. We really have to deal with it. And so what I do is I tend to scrub it out. Um, and this has two advantages. One, you don't have so much nitrogen dioxide in the vicinity, which is beneficial for health and everything rusting around you. But also, this, uh, this water in here, um, as it gets the nitrogen dioxide, pump through it, it becomes nitric acid itself. Um, this is a weak nitric acid, but I keep all this and I use this for cleaning um, and this weak nitric acid is very, very useful. This tubing here is Teflon tubing. I bought it on eBay, I thought, Teflon tubing, that sounds amazing because I've been using rubber tubing or silicone tuning, tubing, anything for this with the nitrogen dioxide going through it just gets destroyed. So I thought, Teflon tubing, that sounds amazing. Like, that's the best product ever, you know, it'll be chem chemically inert. I get it, and I realise why no one has Teflon tubing. It's a real shit to work with. The physical properties of it is, is dreadful as a tube. It just doesn't bend how you want to, and because it's non-stick, it's very hard to, like, seal joints. Like, with this sort of joint here, if you had normal tubing, like here or here, you can just put the tube on the glass and it will stay there. With Teflon tubing, it just doesn't stay there. Like there's no there's no grip on the tube towards the glass. Oh, I can turn this down. So um, I've sealed this with Teflon tape and then parafilm because I just happen to have some parafilm, and um, I've had to do one bit here and then join it um, with some parafilm to another bit, and that goes all the way in here, and then it leads to this funnel here, which is our suck back trap, um, because nitrogen oxide um, does tell really like to suck back the water, especially when it's cold, which increases the nitrogen dioxide efficiency, um, absorption efficiency. Um, and I have had a few occasions where I've had suck back all the way into a uh, fully concentrated nitric acid, which um, is not disastrous, but it totally ruins the batch and you know, it's such a waste of time because I don't need more dilute nitric acid. I want to keep this as, you know, water free as possible. This kind of goes through phases. Um, it's a bit weird, but um, you can see how it's really brown up there and sort of clear. That I think is the, the nitric acid kind of distilling off rather than decomposing. Um, but that, that accompanies the, when it starts to foam. It's annoying in the sense that when it's foaming, it's actually doing the most like efficient distillation. You know what I mean? So it's getting the most nitric acid over when it's foaming, but you have to turn it down because it's foaming. So you have to really like wait for it, to, you know, you want it to foam as much as possible without over foaming it and then turn it down and then, you know, then turn the back heat heat up again, wait for it to foam as much as possible and turn it back down, up to a point, and uh, eventually the reaction settles down and it will start to distill over, um, you know, the back half of your yield um, in, you know, reasonable conditions. It won't foam too much, but for this first half of your yield, you really got to work for it. Yep, see, it's gone, stop foaming. It's just a little puddle down the bottom, so we'll crank the heat back up and you can see the flask is full of brown vapors again so we'll um, crank the heat back up and then it'll start to foam back up again and we'll repeat the cycle for a little while. Just a couple of notes about my setup, um, pe things people may ask. Um, one, do I grease the joints? No. I did try once greasing it with like the high vac grease that I stole a little bit from university and tried to grease the joints and nitric acid, concentrated nitric acid just cuts through that like a hot crumpet through butter, you know? It just melts it, all the grease, the highly inert grease and takes it and um, you end up with all this grease in your final product. So, I mean, the grease is fine for most other things, but concentrated nitric acid, uh, fuming nitric acid is, is really, really testing conditions, so, and it doesn't survive. What you can do is you can grease the joints with sulfuric acid. Um, this stops, you know, them leaking, but you also then have sulfuric acid in your joints. And, you know, I can't be stuffed. It works fine without it. Like, you get a bit of, like, this sort of thing happening. 
nitric acid gets in your joints and your cat clips kind of die they bleach and then um, start to fall apart like that one has see it's all white and then the plastic is broken because it gets all brittle but for the sake of just buying new cat clips every so often I just can't be fucked and uh, this is a bit of a change of pace but I just wanted to briefly mention without actually having to make a whole new video about it because my channel doesn't need update videos it needs fucking chemistry videos my main channel quote unquote main channel explosion of fire is uh, set to make a comeback sort of soonish I've been filming a lot of stuff for it so I've got explosion of fire 2 as, as a channel but the problem is um, as much as I would love to upload energetics probably gonna get banned again the whole YouTube channel is probably gonna get deleted so I'll, I'll upload to YouTube for as much as I can but the thought is to set up a subreddit I've set up a subreddit um, and then there will have base the community for the explosion fire on reddit and then that doesn't matter it doesn't matter where I upload the videos to because if say the YouTube channel gets deleted we still have the community on reddit the problem was last time was that when we lost the channel we lost the community you know I still have copies of the videos but we lost the whole community so if I have to upload to Vimeo or some other site that I haven't heard of yet I can do that through reddit and you still get like notified you'll still see that you can still comment on there without having to make an account on some other random external video platform site so go and subscribe to my subreddit is what I'm trying to tell you to do but in a nice way alrighty you've turned the heat off um, and we're gonna let this all cool down and the rest of the nitrogen dioxide to pump through into the water um, of course once it's cooled down this really is where the um, suck back trap comes into um, fruition I guess because it's, it's needed most of the time but especially when this whole stuff is cooling down it's going to really pull a vacuum so you definitely need a suck back trap here so now that's there I don't have to worry about it I'm just going to go fuck off and mow the lawn because if we take off our product now and stopper it it has so much nitrogen dioxide in it in the nitric acid like dissolved that it tends to just blow the stopper out of the flask and you know like I can't store it inside so um, storing it like this allows it to gas off and you know, we collect it anyway, so um, everything's just going to cool down for like half an hour while I do some mowing. <sighs> really long sigh because I fucked up. I genuinely thought this funnel was well positioned to not have any suck back issues. And I talked about it on camera for so much and I just didn't set it up right. As you can see, you might not be able to quite notice on camera, but that is full of water. Yeah, see that? It's sucking back. And if we look at our wonderful product, well, it used to be wonderful. It's now tripled in size and it's full of water. And it's green. I mean, it's green just from dissolved nitrogen oxides. Nitrogen oxides. But it's no longer our fuming red nitric acid. It's a real shame because the system works fine. It just occasionally, I fuck it up. Oh, I could redo it, but the light's failing on me, so... no. Nah. So we can test the acidity of this water that the nitrogen dioxide bubbled through, and we can see it's definitely very acidic. I think the moral of the story is really, sometimes it's good to quit while you're ahead in chemistry, not get too greedy. So I suppose we actually have done what it says in the title, this is nitric acid, and we made it without using sulfuric acid. It's just not red fuming nitric acid. 